So this was one of the homework questions, right? And it was about maximum displacements and things like this. So part A was nice and easy. It says, a body starts at rest and moves in a straight line. At time t seconds, the displacement of the body from its starting point is given by this. So we want to show it returns to its starting point at t equals 4. Well, when t equals 4, s equals 4 times 4 cubed minus 4 to the power of 4 which very obviously, without even using a calculator, is zero, OK? Easy for that first bit. Now, part B says, explain why s is always non-negative. And I'm really pleased you brought this question up, because this is the kind of weird sort of twists they like to put in questions, OK? Now, there's a hint over there, but we don't need to look at the hints. We can see this thing, and we're trying to examine how this function behaves. And the thing that we're interested about this function is for the input values of the time being between 0 and 4. That's really important. Now, when I look at this, there are some options of things that I can do. And the first option that I would think about doing here is that I would factorize. I would look at this and just be like, OK, well, it looks like if I factorize things, maybe I can see how numbers will behave in a, in a different kind of way. So if I factorize this by taking out the highest power, which is t cubed, you should get 4 minus t. Now, when you get to this stage here, we're trying to show that it is always non-negative. Non-negative doesn't mean positive. It just means it's not negative. What am I saying by that, do you think? It could be 0 as well, because 0 is not a positive number. We're just saying non-negative, meaning it's either positive or 0. It's greater than or equal to 0. So here, because we know that t is between 0 and 4, what do we know um, about t cubed? What kind of number is it? Good. Because t is between t, uh, 0 and 4, t cubed is positive. And also, because t is between 0 and 4, what do we know about 4 minus t? It's always going to be, negative. It's always going to be no negative. It's always 4 minus t is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. And if you just kind of think of a few different values you could put in there, OK, well, if I put in 4, I would get in 0. And if I put in 0, I would get in 4. If I put in, I don't know, 1.5, I would get 2.5. You're always going to have a positive number. So overall, t cubed multiplied by 4 minus t is a positive multiplied by, I'm going to use the word positive for this second bit, because although it's, it's 0, it's basically, they're both positive numbers. So this is a positive multiplied by a positive, which is positive. So t cubed, yes, yeah, so let's just go with s. So s is always non-negative. So it's a bit of a weird kind of way of explaining it. I guess I should have said more carefully here. It's either this second thing is either positive or 0. And if it's 0, blah, blah, blah. But that's probably enough explanation for this bit that we've got here. I've seen them do that before. They love it where you factorize something and you get something squared and then something else squared. I don't know if I think of a completely different example. If you've got something like this and you've got t minus 1 squared and t squared like this, and they might say, show that the displacement is always positive. Well, how do I know that this displacement is always positive or non-negative? Yeah. If any negative squared is a positive. Yep. So if t was either negative or positive, it would be positive. Good. The, the idea of when you have two things that are squared next to each other, mm -hmm. if you square anything, it's going to be positive. And if you square anything here, it's also going to be positive. So you have a positive times a positive. So this whole thing can never be negative. If you saw a graph of it, it's impossible for it to be anywhere below the axis. OK, so that's, the, that's what we'd have for that, that piece that we've got there. I just thought I'd include that because I'm sure, hint, hint, you're going to come across an exam question like this at some point. I'm dropping these hints throughout throughout the year so that when you get to your UCAS and other mock exams, you're not going to be so shocked when you say, but we've never done this before. I'm going to tell you explicitly we, we know these kind of things might come up. Okay. Then part C of the question said, find the maximum displacement of the body. So maximum displacement is when ds dt is equal to 0, when the velocity is 0. So all I'm going to do is differentiate this. So I get um, that ds dt is 12t squared minus 4t cubed. 
And if I want that to be equal to zero, I'm just going to factorize it. What's the highest common factor I can take out? 4t squared, and then I get 3 minus t. So either t is equal to 0 or t is equal to 3. But you have to check which of those gives you the maximum displacement, because it does not they, they're giving you local maximums, potentially. So when t equals 0, s equals 0. And when t equals 3, s equals, this has got nothing to do with the question anymore. 4 times 3 cubed minus 3 to the power of 4 ends up being 27. Sounds about right. Or is it 12? 27. OK. Ends up being 27 meters, or whatever the question was talking about. And I think one of the other questions in that exercise, when you solved this equation here, I think we got two solutions. Did you remember a different question that had more solutions? Trying to test to see if you've done this. <laughs> One of the other questions had three solutions. I think it had t was 0, t was 3, and t was 6. And you had to sub in all three of those values to find out which was the one that gave you the, the maximum. But then if you drew the graph. If you drew it, it made sense, right? But if you didn't draw the graph, you'd have to substitute in all of those values to find out which one was the very maximum that we had there. OK. We will finish off this topic in today's lesson, and then we will spend a bigger chunk of time on forces, which is really what all of mechanics is about, okay?